divided we fall. Unity is strength, oh. United we stand, oh. United we stand, oh. Divided we fall. Unity is strength, oh. United we stand, oh. oh. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. You're watching ID Mind Media Radio and Television. Your humble host, Comrade Fritz Missouri. This is the Political Lab talk show, your favorite show. I bring analysis of uh, events happening in Ambazonia, events happening in Africa, events happening across the globe. Today, we're going to uh, focus on. Uh, the those uh, root causes of uh, the issues happening in Ambazonia. Uh, we are going to analyze this and we're going to uh, bring you some events that have happened uh, along the years and uh, we try to see how we we can discuss this in light with uh, uh, those events that we all know happened in Ambazonia for the past seven years. Uh, the people of Ambazonia uh, have been marginalized, have been uh, all sort of human rights abuses. We have seen all sort of human rights abuses happening in Ambazonia. So uh, today I want to focus on that freedom that we want, the freedom that Ambazonians have been fighting for over the past seven years. That freedom is not free until every single Ambazonian is free. That is the freedom that we all cherish. The freedom that every single individual in the world cherish. That freedom that is embedded in the international human right. Okay? It's the same freedom that everybody wants. It's the same freedom the all conflicts in the world. It's the same freedom that each and everyone cherish. No single freedom is different from other freedoms. The freedom the people of Southern Cameroon and Bazunia are looking for today is the same freedom that everyone is looking for. Okay? Everyone is equal in front of the law. Everyone is equal in front of freedom. Freedom is not good for some people and, and, and not good for others. Everyone wants equal life, equal representation in everything they do in life. That is the same freedom that the people of Ambazonia have been fighting for for the past seven years, a war declared on the people of Ambazonia. Today, I'm going to be bringing this because it's very vital. The people of Ambazonia, some of them, they call themselves Anglophone. Uh, the, the, that is a colonial appellation, right? We have made our, uh, you know, our country change the name like other countries did before. From Southern Cameroon to Ambazonia, okay, like Ghana did from change their name from Upper Volta to uh, uh, Gold Coast, uh, they changed their name to Ghana, okay. Many countries did because they they want to recognize their identity. It's a special identity. You don't want to use the colonial name used on you, right? So that identity is very important. And today, most of our people don't understand how this crisis started because before they were very comfortable with the life they were living there. But during when the crisis started in 2016, our people started knowing that oh, they have been marginalized for the past 50 years, 
they have not had their own fair share of what is going on okay it, so 2016 was an eye opener that's why the people of Ambazonia rose up with their peace plans in their masses the protest across Ambazonia what happened be a declared war on the people of Ambazonia we are uh, uh, saying this because if you see any Ambazonian, Southern Cameroonian who is silent today, it's not because they want to be silent. It's because they are made to be silent, okay, by the uh, by the regime of Yaoundé. It's a dictatorial regime. You, uh, uh, you know, it's a very very dictatorial regime that there's no freedom of speech, there's no freedom of expression, no freedom of protest, no freedom of anything. So. Whatever you do there is at your own risk. Okay? So the only response the BR regime understand is a response to go apart with them, with their military. That's the only response they, they can understand. And that's why you see them try to understand now what the Ambazonian people are saying you know, along the years. Okay? Then the, 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 we understand all those parts, the non decolonization process. Of the you know of our territory you know the 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 the, the, the french cameroon's illegal claim of you know of, of our territory all these are part of that problem okay the french policy system of oppression in southern cameroon these are all issues that have been boiling up along the years it has been boiling up along the years but when our people rose in 2016 uh, that is where they say ah so these people understand yeah cameroon okay the the the, the, the system in la republic du cameroon is a system that has been borrowed from france and anything happening in cameroon today instruction is coming from france okay so it's a matter of our sensitization of our people to understand that no one Ambazonia is free without every Ambazonian being free. If we cannot be free, all Ambazonians should be free at the same time. Okay, our treat, our you know, our freedom is existential threat. They call it existential threat because. If, if you don't fight for that freedom, if you don't fight for that identity, you will lose your identity. Mm? Every country is proud of the day of their independence. The day your, your country was born is the day that your independence, is the day of your independence. Okay? That's why every 1st of October, Ambazonians are proud. That is the day the United Nations recognized with the resolution 1608. They say you are a country. Do you the only thing that is really really not you know we don't understand why it happened is that you are giving a country an independent. You're voting for a country's independent, you're granting that country an independent status. But you're asking the country to go and join either this country or this other country. It makes it so difficult for the people of Ambazonia to, to, to comprehend why upon all these counties in Africa they choose only Ambazonian, Southern Cameroon to join either Nigeria or to join the French Cameroon. If you are given two choices to choose between do you want to join this country or you want to join this other country? What will you say? That is the problem that we are having today, where the people of Ambazonia were forced to join this country where the two cultures are not going through. The, 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 the system of education, the legal system is not the same. Okay, and what do you expect in that kind of relationship? Okay, La Republic of Cameroon took advantage of those weaknesses, right? And when they discovered the oil, they discovered the resources in Amazonia, they say, oh, today, don't forget that we are being killed, the people of Amazonia are being killed because of their resources, right? 
60% of the country's resources, Cameroon and Ambazonia combined, comes from our region. But of recent, that's why you, when we talk of economic sabotage, people do not understand what is economic sabotage. It's to sabotage any transfer of resources from Amazonia to La Republic. That is the economic sabotage that has crumpled that government. The largest employer, CDC, is down today. The oil refinery is down. Okay. So they are now starting to weigh the option. Do we, do we want to stay in this Ambazonia war and not seeing something coming out from this war or we want to stop this war and go to negotiation? It's up to the Cameroon government to decide if they want to stay and face the economic sabotage, the economic uh, downturn, all the financial losses that they are having in Ambazonia or they want to go and start negotiating because it it makes no sense for you to stay in a country the people don't want you there you are there you, you your military is there causing all kinds of human rights abuses okay genociding our people doing all those things but the people don't want you there how do you want the people to explain to you that their freedom is not negotiable. How do you want the people of Ambazonia to tell you that they don't want you in, in, in Ambazonia? We, the people of Ambazonia don't want you there, La Republic. Why, why can't you understand this? It's a simple thing. For seven years, the people have fighting, have been fighting back. You have used all sorts of uh, means to try to uh, change the hearts and minds of the people. It has not worked. You are doing all these atrocities on our people. Leave the land. Go back to your land. Go and be your land. La Republic people. La Republic military. It's as simple as that. You declared a war on a people. You came to their land. You are you are killing them. You are doing all sorts of atrocities. You, you What do you want them to do? You want them to sit and watch you uh, where have you seen people being attacked and they watch they will stand and be watching you people doing all these atrocities we are we are a people we have an identity we join you people in a referendum in a plebiscite we join you people to say let's share this leadership let's share this let's share this and see how we can live as a people but you people took advantage of us. Yes, you took advantage of the of the uh, kind-hearted Ambazonian Southern Cameroonian people. Mm. You say okay. Uh, 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 uh. When when uh, uh, I listened to uh, Foncha, I was so touched because he abandoned all all the uh, poses that they gave him. You know all the the PM position, he resigned and all those things because he was not happy. All our parents were not happy. The way they were being treated by both Ahijo and Bia's uh, regime. The disenfranchisement, all the discrimination, it, was, it, it wasn't in their favor. So, our people should understand this fight is not about us. It's not about you. It's about the people of Amazonia. When you are in this fight today, you are still looking at one or two leader, the leader does the leader. Then you don't know who you're fighting. This is about the existence of 8 million people. It's not about 10 people. It's not about two leaders. It's not about one leader. We have to fight to liberate our country, Amazonia. It's an existential threat. It's an existential threat. We have to chart our own our own destiny. Mm. We have to. There is no way we have to sit and watch. There are people in government because they have to be there. Sometimes they are forced to be there. Sometimes they are forced to say things that they are not even ready to say. That's how the dictatorship, the, the dictatorship work. You cannot survive in a kind of regime 
that is a dictatorship government because uh, they want to, some some of the people want to survive but the truth of the matter is that our people are in bondage there is no treaty of union there is nothing that bond us together the only thing they know is our resources okay yes but our people should know that we are not a dull people we are very very rich people rich in human resources rich in resources rich in our ideas rich in our people okay our our destiny lies in our own hand the new colonial system is there to 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 let us to hit our heads among ourselves and say oh you are the cause of this you are the cause of this you are the cause of this that is the work of uh, divide and rule they will bring all the forms of divide and rule to 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 divide our people among themselves and eh? you, you you saw this along the years of this struggle right where uh, people this they will come and talk about uh, all forms of uh, 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 you know the norways sours you know norways and sours and this and that yeah, francophone anglophone yeah but what i want to let our people know today is that we don't belong in la republic du cameroon we 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 belong in ambazonia for the past years our people do not understand that these people have been using us they have been uh, disenfranchising us they have been exploiting us they have mistreated us in all forms of way what what other way do you want to be treated to for you to understand that you don't belong in somebody's country or you you are not part of somebody's country i'm talking now to the frank uh, to the anglophones i'm not talking to ambazonians because ambazonians already understand where they belong mm? they know they don't belong there the the anglophones uh, are the ones that we are talking to now those who think that <laughs> they belong somewhere but they don't belong right the head of those anglophones is a prime minister someone who does not even have a right someone who does not even know his he, what he's doing he has no no function he has no no freedom of his own self someone who is like the fit in command in everything he cannot even appoint then but they call him head of government it's a figurehead. They will put somebody there thinking that, oh, this person represent, uh, um, uh, you know, but if they will not work. Then our uh, our fed, uh, our federalists will come and tell us that, oh, they want a fed federation. They want this, they want, what do you want? No, nobody give you freedom. Nobody gives anybody anything. If you dream that one day they'll give you that, that federation, you are, you, are, you are there every day. I'm a proud federalist. Nobody will give you that freedom. Ambazonians are fighting for the freedom. They are fighting for that freedom. Nobody, Ambazonians don't believe in somebody giving them freedom. That is why they are fighting for it. If you sit there and say you are a proud federalist, proud this, proud that, that's your own business. That's your business. If you believe that uh, you sitting there and folding your arms, waiting for uh, crumbs to fall from uh, manners to fall from heaven, that's your business. We understood that government seven years ago. If it is now that you are understanding that government, good and fine for you. But that government is not a government that will, will give you any chance anytime soon. Forget it those anglophones uh, that are there dreaming of one day becoming something in that country or though they'll, they'll give we who will give you federation <laughs> oh my god when will you know that freedom is not given hmm? 
we are just saying because you people are the few that are still remaining in that dream in that utopian society thinking that land probably will give you federation who gives freedom nobody give anybody freedom nobody you fight for freedom eh? you fight for your freedom nobody will give you who gives freedom eh? where have you seen a, an occupier or a, a colonizer give uh, people freedom eh? did you see that happen in, in uh, south africa did you see that happen in uh, Afghanistan or somewhere in the world that uh, somebody will come and give you freedom? Hmm? They don't give. This, even before the abolition of the slave, the slave trade, no, the slave fought for their freedom. They, 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 they revolted for their freedom. Nobody gave, the slave master never gave the, the, the freedom to slaves. Mm. This, the, 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 the slaves said, oh, now it's time to liberate ourselves. Don't sit there, you say you are a federalist. These federalists, and they are proud, thinking that one day, they will, Lord Bobo will come and say, okay, uh, well, you have suffered, take, take this federation. And the clauses for the, for, since the, the, the few years that we joined La Republic before the abolition of the federal system by, by Aijo, what happened? Eh? It was a gradual process of assimilation, a gradual process of, of disenfranchisement. It was a gradual process of cleansing, ethnic, ethnic cleansing. When, they, when you see somebody cleaning up everything that you have, from your seaport, from your airport, from your resources, they are cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. If not that Ambazonia is a very rich territory, very rich land, what do you expect from that kind of... Uh, I want you to listen a little bit to uh, this short excerpt from... Uh, Dr. Susongo, uh, uh, Dr. Christopher Fomunyo is uh, take a little bit listen to him. They will they will come back. That's not right. Yeah, but 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 uh, formally formally we saw we saw uh, the United Nations uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He came to Cameroon. Um, La Francophonie. They came to Cameroon. Uh, Commonwealth. They all came to Cameroon and. Um, at the level of the United States where you live, we had the Congress and uh, the Senate that also made uh, some resolutions. At the level of uh, the EU Parliament, resolutions were also uh, made. Or oh, Why are they silent today? Yeah, that's true. Uh, in fact, I remember the Senate Resolution 684, yes. which was very detailed, very thorough, bipartisan. Yeah. At a time when politics, even in Washington, is very polarized. Yeah. The Republicans and the Democrats came together on resolution, Senate Resolution 684, which was very comprehensive. Yeah. Uh, the Biden administration is talked about sanctions and visa sanctions. And Secretary Blinken, when during his hearing for confirmation hearing, cited Cameroon as one of the crises that would be a priority for his administration. So you're right in saying that in the United States, in Europe, there's been at one moment, at one moment early on, there was some, some attention, but now there's uh, radio silence, so to speak. And I will say two things. One is that the international community is overwhelmed okay. by the multiplicity of crises around the world. Mm -hmm. We talk about Russia and Ukraine, yes. but there's also Israel and Gaza. Mm -hmm. uh, what's happening in, in, in Gaza, mm -hmm. and that's all the multiple multiplicity of crises that are going on that have become a distraction for those of us for whom this crisis is an existential threat. Mm -hmm. And so we can understand that. The second thing is that it takes two to tango. In the countries where in the international community is gone in, mm -hmm. and the, the power of the day has embraced their import there's been success because everyone has come to the table working together hand in hand mm. to draw from the expertise that others bring apply them to the local conditions to look for a solution that's why you even saw as as late as january 2022 um 
was it January 2020? Yeah, January 2023 or December in the fall of 2022, carrying over into January 2023, when the Canadians mm -hmm. made the announcement that Canada will provide a platform. A platform. It didn't say that Canada was going to be front and center. It said Canada would provide a platform for the communities to get together and sort out their differences. What did we see in the month right after that announcement? We saw a decline in violence. We saw a decline in confrontations between the boys and the military. We saw a ray of hope. People beginning to say, please, there's going to be a platform where these grievances will, will be addressed. But as soon as the government came out with a statement that said it wasn't part of the Canada conversations, a lot of op optimism dried up. A lot of people became pessimistic. All of a sudden, the ray of hope darkened. Mm. And see how many people have lost their lives in the one year since, just in the last year. And so it takes two to tango. It and is. if the powers that be are unwilling to tango, then people say, then why waste your time here? Take your expertise elsewhere where people need you. Yeah. You, you just heard an excerpt from uh, uh, one of uh, the people from Southern Cameroon. Uh, he's, he's a learned uh, colleague who is also a professor here in America. Uh, from from his to, just to summarize his uh, his uh, little uh, interview there is to tell you that uh, the the international community understand the the manipulation of the Cameroon government not to go to negotiation table the the then the aspect of the the uh, American government giving sanctions on the. Uh, the officials of Cameroon government who are the root causes of this war. A apart from that, one thing that I, would, that I want to take from that war is said, existential threat. I want you to understand, when they say existential threat, it means that this struggle is a threat to your existence. It means that if you don't fight for your freedom, you, you lose your identity. And who does not? Who is not proud of going back to his country and say, "I'm going back to my country"? Who is not proud of that? Who is not proud of your of your existence or of your identity? If you don't un understand this this uh, crisis, you not understand where this crisis is going. He mentioned about the Canadian coming to help, giving their own country as a platform to help resolve the crisis. But what happened? La Republic to Cameroon back out. This thing has been going on from the Grand National Dialogue, which which failed because they when I brought all the CPDM members and put them down and said they should say this, say this, say this. All those federalists today, no one of them can be proud to say that they came out of that uh, what they call national dialogue and came out successful. All what they discuss, no one has been implemented. Even the those who are proud federalists today, and they are still proud to be federalists. When the little thing that they even discuss, <laughs> so sometimes it baffles me how these people are. We are we are already free. We are trying to free the few who are still left behind. The few federalists who think that they can have something there. Nothing will come there, my brother. Nothing. Mm. Our uh, people are there suffering in prison. Our people are there suffering in uh, uh, refugee camps. Who even talk about them? I was so happy when I saw, saw this... Uh, 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 the, this uh, former lawyer and minister, Momo, Jean DJ Momo, who is a minister delegate in the Ministry of Justice in La Republic, he said our people were taken hostage. And when you say hostage taking, it means that you 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 arrest people against their wish, or you, you there was no legal procedure when they were arrested. 
in everything you do, they they should be legal procedure. You cannot go to Nigeria and just arrest people like that. Eh? The Nera 10, the Taraba 49, all these people that were arrested illegally. Many of our people, Abdel Karim, hmm, Mancho BBC, all these guys that have been arrested. They are there language it in jail. Then our people who are there calling themselves uh, federalists are just making their own noise. Federation doesn't come by you only talking a one federation. A one federation. How are you? Do, what process are you doing? What are you doing in your own uh, uh, terms to fight for the federation? You sit and be making noise. Your people are there in prison. Fe Federalists will not sit and be waiting for 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 Amazonian to fight. Then they will come and say, "I'm a proud Federalist." What are you doing? Freedom is not free. Freedom is not given in a platter of gold. Don't don't think that uh, like people will give you any freedom. They are just like colonial occupiers. They think like the slave ma like the slave master. They think how the people of you know in the apartheid regime were thinking. They don't. They they, they, they they will not give you any freedom. We have we Ambazonia have to learn that. We have learned that in these past several years, right? You saw the way they burning, uh, uh, you know, our villages, burning the, 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 the towns and cities, burning hospitals. That, that's how, that's what, what they call scotch egg policy. When they want to do something, when somebody hates you, that's what they do to you. Who would do that to, to a people? Burning their, you know, anything that want to look nice to them. Killing, they don't care. The life, Ambazonian life doesn't matter to them. They can kill any Ambazonian, it's okay. But when, when one of them is touched, hell break loose. That is the difference between you and them. You have seen that in many you know, instances, right? Bamena market, burn. Kumba market, burn. Many market, so many market, in Queen market, burn. That's how they are doing. You saw the hospital. Hmm? Scotch egg policy. That's what they call scotch egg policy. That's what they call existential threat. It means that somebody is threatening to wipe out your identity. Wipe out anything that belongs to you. So that nobody will even know that you exist. That's what they call existential threat. That uh, our able professor just mentioned so when you you know he's just giving just little tip i see him he doesn't want to go into much detail about the you know the interview you know but you saw he mentioned the resolution 684 right they are the u.s in a pass that resolution right condemning all what cameroon government is doing the biden administration also gave visa ban to all those government officials somebody like atanganji cannot come to america never he'll be arrested they give them visa ban so don't be so don't forget so america understand this crisis america understand america is the only country that has given visa ban america has given our people tps temporary protective status america has given our people now uh, the recent one even Upon all those other resolutions that American government passed, this recent one is the one that they want to give us uh, 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 parole. What they call uh, uh, parole? Parole is like giving a kind of special status to the people of, of uh, Ambazonia in America where they can stay freely for quite a long time till the crisis is over. So when people are dead, Telling you nonsense. Don't believe them. D this crisis is an international crisis. Don't make it look like a local crisis. That is what the like, public is trying to make you to understand. This crisis is not about somebody carry you to Yaoundé and go and give you 15000 No. Think about your loss. Think about the future of your children. Can 15000 buy the future of your children? Can 15000 They'll give you Yaoundé that, that uh, 
fake guy, that fake lawyer and call Salai. That have lost all his lawsuit in America. All his lawsuit in America, he has lost everything. You you go to to your own day, pick some few people in your own day, go and say these are the uh, victims, and collect their monies, or collect money from the government of your own day and give them uh, some uh, chicken change. For the past 15 years, how many of our people have lost their homes? How many of our people have lost their children? How many of you have lost something very, very special to you? If you have not lost a house, you have lost one of your very, very loved one. If you have not lost your maybe your farms, or if you have not lost something special to you but overall we all have lost freedom freedom nobody give you i always say that because you should fight for it we saw what is happening in a uh, momo county the interim government is there to help those situations we have already told uh, the adf they should stop all those things you will not want to liberate the people and you are putting the people in bondage you don't do that most of the if today la republic has not succeeded in defeating the people of Amazonia, it's not because you carry weapon or you carry this or you carry that no it's the people the strength of the people is the is, is, is the most powerful la republic has tried to to deceive our people in many ways or go to this village tell them to march against the struggle this, it has no work the conscience of the people is more stronger it this is about the will of the people it's about that determination yes this has nothing to do with fooling somebody like what we have tried to bribe one or two leaders bribe one or two group bribe one or two this it has no work it does not work, but they have to understand. I'll bring an excerpt of uh, some of this again, then you listen a little bit. Esther, you are an elite from the Northwest regions. We have uh, elites from other uh, divisions and um, villages, communities in the Southwest and Northwest regions. What do you think? the elite are political administrative religious in fact the elites of the southwest and northwest regions what extra can they do you know um in fairness to those elites mm -hmm. from the northwest and the southwest they are themselves the victims okay. of this crisis mm -hmm. you know john gu foncha was an anglophone elite the way he was treated identified in the petition that he wrote when he left his political party, his testament to how he felt. Honorable Solomon Tando Muna was an Anglophone elite. The way he felt when he left the Constitutional Review Commission and wrote about it, said something about how he felt in this republic. If the Constitution had not been changed to make of the Speaker of the National Assembly the third personality and not the second, he would have succeeded um, uh, Amadou Ahijo when President Ahijo decided to leave. People see that. And we first see the way the microaggression that is being inflicted on the current Prime Minister. The way he's being undermined by some of his, his ministers. Even fair minded Francophones are extremely upset. And what do you expect Anglophones to how do you expect Anglophones to feel? We are a decent people. We are people with dignity. We are a smart people. We don't deserve this. We don't. We don't. Yeah, but we you want to compete in, in today's world. Mm -hmm. And so the people who have caused the crisis cannot tell, uh, turn around and say, you, you go resolve your crisis. They have caused the crisis. Because the issues are known. The anglophone grievances are known. They are reasonable francophones who have come out. The former governor a boy mature, former minister, former secretary general in the president's office. The only Francophone who was governor of the Southwest and governor of the Northwest. He has spoken out very clearly 
the anglophone grievances are known. When Ahijo was president, President Ahijo, he had a commission. The current president was on that commission. Abu Macho was on that commission. Uh, uh, former Minister Dorit Njema was on that commission. They have spoken out. I mean, Abu Ab has spoken out. The, the former governor, uh, uh, Ahmad, Ahmad Muhammad, who was governor of the Northwest, he has written books about this, this issue. Um, Ayangma, you know, Protea Ayangma from the private sector. Uh, lawyers have spoken. And so the grievances are known. If they're being tackled, there will be no need to say the extra burden should be on Anglophone elites. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I just brought an excerpt of uh, that interview. You know, sometimes some of us don't understand uh, our own our own rights. We don't know that uh, what we what we have, we are people of dignity. We are people who who. who we are decent people. We are nice. We are very welcoming people. We are, we are people who know uh, respect of human rights, respect of, 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 of people's dignity. We are not, you know, people from, from the space who come from nowhere. The disappointment of Foncha, the disappointment of all our former leaders, our forebears, will tell you today that when you want to do something, look, look, look at the way they are treating the prime minister. Look at the way they are treating the prime minister. I always say this: the prime minister have no function there. Eh? He's just been, uh, and and then the front, the anglophones will come and tell us that they have uh, that, that they are represented there. See the way they are treating even even the parliamentarians. They will be crying, crying up and down. See the way they are treating our chiefs. See the way they are treating our phones. Look at back in the days, phones were very, very respected people. The Greek custodians, custodians of our of our uh, culture. Today they will call them. I saw some phones having their palace in Yaoundé now. How demeaning! How how they, they have demeaned our culture, our our, our 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 cultural inheritance. How do you carry your palace from your village take to your own day? The gods cannot bless you. The gods will be angry because you have taken that that culture to somewhere else. You put your palace in Yaoundé. Is your palace in Yaoundé? They should come back home. They should join their people in this fight. Every single Southern Cameroonian, whether you are Anglophone, whether you are what you call yourself, so far as you have your alma mater, you have your umbilical court in that very four pillars called Southern Cameroon. You are an, an Amazonian. But we are very... We feel pity for you guys. Because you think that you belong, but you don't belong. You don't belong where be, somebody don't welcome you. It's just like you are in... You, you live in somebody's house. The way the person does his things, you know that you don't have to stay in that small house. Eh? Go, to, go and visit somebody's house. Stay... One day, two day, number three day, you 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 tend to know that that person does not need you in that house, eh? Because there will be a day that the person will come and turn off the TV. Hmm? You sit one day and the person will tell you, please, we we'll have to sleep at nine o'clock. You are in his house. He has a right to tell you what to do. Okay. You, you see this day, the person will come and tell you, hey, please, don't come home late. Please, by, by 8 o'clock, be, be be home. That's, you sh your, your mind should start telling you that <laughs> that house is not your house. Leave. Hmm? They will cook. They don't give you food. They will do this. They don't, they, there are signals. When somebody lets you know that you don't belong, try to understand. Eh? But, 
this is an except. I'll, let me bring this one. You, you, you listen. What we're talking about the prime minister. You listen what they are, what they are saying. Si on revient donc sur le gouvernement, euh, le premier ministre, selon vous, il doit continuer à pouvoir gérer cette équipe gouvernementale Est-ce que le premier ministre gère l'équipe gouvernementale ou pas de quoi Le premier ministre est là pour euh, remplir l'organigramme, il gère quelle équipe gouvernementale Il connaît qu'on nomme un ministre comment Il peut proposer la nomination de quelqu'un Je préfère même le président de l'Assemblée nationale, il gère même un budget. Ah, non, c'est le secrétaire général qui gère, mais... Au moins, il y a un budget. À la salle. Non, non, laissez-moi tout ça. C'est l'ensemble des choses que je dis qu'il faut corriger. On dit le président nomme le gouvernement sur proposition du premier ministre. Et on nomme même les ministres avant de nommer le premier ministre. Mais, mais vraiment, il ne faut, faut pas nous prendre pour des, pour des cons. Il n'y a pas de premier ministre au Cameroun. Il y a un monsieur qu'on a mis quelque part et on lui dit que si on appelle les ministres, tu arrives le premier, c'est tout. Donc pour vous, c'est un poste inutile, comme dit M. Barafa. C'est un poste inutile. Utile, inutile. On peut le sacrifier. Le sacrifier qu'il existait, on peut l'oublier, comme on l'oublie souvent. <rire> Alors, si on peut parler de la taille du gouvernement. Mais qu'est-ce que vous avez <rire> Vous voulez non. être premier ministre Non, <rire> rien du tout. Il ne faut pas être découragé. Non. <rire> la taille du gouvernement 60, 60 ministères. Le président de la République vous a dit que ce ne sont pas des ministres. La taille du gouvernement, je crois qu'il y a 12 ministres au Cameroun. Le reste, c'est des noms des notables, comme on donne à l'Ouest les SOP, les, les Mwamba, les ceci. Ce ne sont pas des, des ministres. C'est des, des petits mangeurs. Hein? Qu'est-ce que. Qu -ce que mais... Il ne faut plus m'inviter. Voilà. Bon, on va, on, va, on, va, on, va, on va mettre fin à l'émission parce que. Arrive, mais, euh, on a une reste 5 minutes, hein, je suis arrivé au, au terme. Mais pourquoi tu es arrivé au terme Non, non, non. <rire> merci, M. Zonga, d'avoir accepté d'être notre invité ce soir. Yeah. So, you see, even the journalist is even shocked, you know, by what uh, Albert Zonga is saying. This is Zonga, the same person who was. Who reveal about the how they stole the election from Fundi, right? It's the same person telling you what is happening in that country. He knows the route. He said the prime minister has no function. He said the only thing that they use a prime minister is to ask him to come first, or when all the ministers come, then they, they, <laughs> then he will come last. <laughs> you see. So they know how they are manipulating. He said there is no prime minister in that country. Okay, there is no position like prime minister. That is, that if they, he said if if there is a prime minister, how can they appoint all? Okay, they say the prime minister is the head of government, is the person who is in charge of government. He said no, the prime minister doesn't even have a function there. Okay, this. The journalist was telling him, asking him that, okay, but the prime minister appoint the ministers. <laughs> he said, no, the prime minister don't appoint ministers. The prime minister's job is just to, you know, when all the ministers arrive, then he will come last <laughs> in, in an event. <laughs> that he, he said he preferred the power of the speaker of the National Assembly. Mm? So the, the, the speaker has more power than than the than the prime minister you see so you see the system okay whereas the speaker should be the third right in it, like in america the president the vice president then the speaker of the national assembly okay that's how it happened then you go now you, you to the see uh, to the uh, supreme court mm? that's how the hierarchy there is you see so but imagine no post of the of the vice president they abolished that one they, they, they didn't want to hear about the vice president position because they know that the vice president will automatically be president in case of any eventuality okay but we are just saying that just to concentrize our fellow Fran uh, anglophones uh, some of them are like the black like they are luciphones we call them luciphones they have become more of lucifer than but we are not you know we will keep Concentrizing both of them, whether you are anglophone, you are luciphone, 
you are black leg, you are yellow leg. We are conscientizing you people. Ambazonians have realized that they don't belong. They have taken their destiny in their own hands. They have moved forward. If you stay there, keep waiting for crumbs. Eh? You want to squeeze stone to take water from stone. How do you squeeze stone? How do you squeeze to something that is already bad? A sour grape. You squeeze sour grape to make juice. Now, <laughs> we realized this seven years ago. We will keep letting you people know that that freedom will not come by somebody giving you. You will fight for that freedom. You will fight for that freedom. Because we are in an existential threat. Okay? Existential threat. Okay? I was very happy. The recent, the, the Nigerian uh, National Assembly this same match just passed a public hearing on the on the seat of March about the abduction of the Ambazonian leaders, Seseko uh, Ayok, Tabe, and uh, the and the others. Okay, this same match, the seat of March. Just imagine. So you see, the Nigerian court is uh, the Nigerian National Assembly is discussing about a crisis in Cameroon. But the Cameroon National Assembly has never brought this discussion for seven good years. What does that tell you? The, these people call themselves uh, federalists. What does that tell you? If they kill, genocide, burning, killing people, burning people in their houses, thought everything. They kill your own sons and daughters, display their bodies in public. You watch. You say nothing. If foreign countries, foreign countries are coming to discuss to help you, to you it means nothing. But, they, but, but for for people who know their human rights, this is Nigerian National Assembly, Nas Nigerian National Assembly discussing. The, 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 the illegal abduction of our leaders from Nigeria to Nkondengi. Remember, they were arrested in Comunicado for almost one month to two months. We did not know where they were. They were under the bunker in that uh, said that La Republic military uh, military uh, dungeon, that uh, place that they keep people there. So, if Nigerian government or Nigerian National Assembly is asking for the release of all the Nera 10 and those people who were arrested in Nigeria to be brought back to Nigeria and being compensated, what does that tell you? It tells you that they were illegally arrested. Okay? They were illegally arrested. The... the, the, the the Nigerian High Court passed it before. Now is the Nigerian General Assembly, the Nigerian National Assembly. So the Nigerian government realized their mistake because when they went to Nigeria, when this Cameroon government went to Nigeria, they bribed some certain individuals. They gave money to some police officials. Before the police officials realized that they were doing the wrong thing, these guys were already taken out of Nigeria. That is the mistake that they are trying to correct. The Nigerian High Court made a mistake. And now the Nigerian, one of those officials there were bribed to arrest Seseko Ayok and the others. You know, the law of extradition is very, very, is, is against international law for you to go to a, another country and arrest refugees. Listen to me. Refugees. Okay. The only country that can. Can extradite. Okay. Refugee or arrest someone. Is that same host country. If for, if you are, for example. You are in America. Cameroon government cannot come to America. And, uh, and ask um, or re re arrest refugees in, uh, in America who are seeking refuge. It's against international law. 
refuge is, is, is it means that you are running from a rogue regime okay a dictatorial regime and you are seeking refuge in that country that country is obliged to protect you that is the international human right law the law of refugee and 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 and, and, and asylum seeking you cannot do that that is why Nigerian is trying to correct that mistake that they did to allow the Cameroon some funny crazy corrupt officials went from Cameroon and went to Nigeria and bribed some officials they, they had to swindle our leaders from uh, Nigeria to Cameroon then the other ones from Taraba almost 49 of them refugees so they have to correct it they correct, the Nigerian High Court already corrected it. They said they should release all those people and send back to Nigeria. They still have refugee status. They are supposed to be compensated. They are supposed to be given their, their due process. It's only the Nigerian government that has a right to follow up your asylum case, follow up your refugee case, see that, oh, this, this your case is not, is not a viable case they will they will finish your refugee case and they'll send you back that is understandable because not everybody's refugee or asylum case is genuine some people are coming like this you know the Fra francophones come in america and and they are saying they are ambazonians yes just to have asylum so those are fraudulent cases because they are not really be impacted the Ambazonian people, the war is in Ambazonia. The war is not in La Republic. But they will come here in America and seek asylum and say that, oh, they are, they are affected by the war in Cameroon. What, which war is in Cameroon? The war is in Ambazonia, not Cameroon. So, uh, so if you are coming from French Cameroon, you cannot come and seek asylum. As, so, you know, feeling pain from, what pain are you feeling? Are you come and occupy somebody's land, you are feeling uh, what pain? The people who are impacted, internally displaced, refugee, in jail, incarcerated, killed, burnt houses, villages, burnt, uh, churches, uh, schools, everything is being burnt in Ambazonia, not in La Republic. So you cannot come that, uh, that you are suffering from the, the, the crisis. But what is this telling you? We have come to the to the crossroad fellow ambazonians we have burnt our own bridges sometimes but that mongo bridge or the matasem very soon that borders will be closed and once that border is closed all the anglophones or you call yourself what <laughs> you start looking for laissez passer as it was before we will close that borders when the time comes. Nobody will... When the time comes... So, start making yourself as a freedom fighter. Join Ambazonians in this freedom. We want collective freedom. We don't want a freedom that some Ambazonians will be left behind. Or some uh, Anglophones who still think that they can have something. Okay? The actualization of our independence and sovereignty is not negotiable. We don't negotiate independence. You don't negotiate identity. Okay? You don't negotiate that. So beyond any shadow of doubt from you people in Yaoundé, whether you are there, we know that you are, you know, your hands are tight. We, we understand all those. But don't let money betray your people most of the black legs today are no more there why they have realized themselves la republic will use you use you and dump you la republic does not have a friend how many people have been friends with la republic where are they today they know the government of cameroon does not have friends they don't have friends okay but they have learned a lesson that Ambazonians are no more jokers. They mean business. The people of Southern Cameroon have spoken. 
we declare our independence in 2017 we have uh, declared the 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 the, the uh, our you know independence that was lost now we are looking for recognition after restoring that independence okay but are you ready to pay that ultimate price many of our people have passed away they did not pass away for you to be clowning to be joking with this struggle please if you are still new in this struggle know that our people have died our our heroes okay yes there is no historical evidence anywhere in the world of a people shedding blood for a mere federation there is none all the federations in, 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 in the whole of africa have failed you people federalists should learn that lesson none of that federal system have worked throughout history hmm? no one especially in africa okay people in all climes have died and continue to die to be free nobody died to be still in bondage our people did not die for us to stay and be still keep in bondage eh? complaining whining complaining dining with the enemy no our people have sacrificed for this past seven years for your generation and next generation to be free not for you to go back and eat the same vomit that you that you left behind no okay yes the only remaining question now is for us now is how soon will the international community recognize what they are seeing ambazonians have done their part it's left for the international community to come in and complete the the unfinished business don't forget keep fighting okay fight for your right we are people you have heard from all the speakers people with dignity people with we are decent people don't let somebody give you a bad name you have to recognize yourself you have to determine yourself that's what they call self dignity self recognition self determination it means that you know who you who you are don't let somebody give you a bad name because you know what you're fighting for as an ambazonian stay focused till we reach boya thank you for watching this has been comrade freeze miss Sodi. thank you and god bless you god bless the people of ambazonia thank you for watching as we move to the next level Oh, <laughs>